We're okay. into the last session now uh, with Jens uh, Threnhardt. Uh, Jens, yep, I can see you. Uh, can you unmute yourself? Thank you very much, Dr. Rufai. Um, and first of all, I would like to thank Paul and Laura of Planet Happiness for inviting me to chair this fifth and final block of this significant virtual conference. And I'd also wish to uh, like to wish everybody uh, participating today a, a happy day of happiness. So this uh, session is about storytelling. So why is storytelling and tourism important for the happiness agenda? So anybody who knows me a bit knows that I'm passionate about storytelling at Mekong Tourism. We are a public-private framework with our six governments. We are the Mekong Tourism Coordinating Office and our private sector platform, Destination Mekong. We've launched various award-winning storytelling initiatives to inspire and to conserve from Mekong moments to our Mekong mini movie festival campaigns. But why is storytelling so powerful to not only promote destinations and travel experiences, but also change people's behavior to be more responsible? So early humans shared their stories through cave paintings and around the fireplace and communicate everything from rumors to community traditions and power struggles. Storytelling has been a powerful, important cornerstone of the tourism industry and comes naturally to people. Yet the tourism industry can and should do a better job of using storytelling to connect travelers with the core priorities and belief systems within the industry. Generally speaking, values within the tourism industry include ideas such as the importance of protecting the environment, supporting local communities, creating awareness of and educating people about socio-cultural and environmental challenges, and being a force for good in a way that creates conditions for a sustainable and even regenerative future for the industry. Though travelers may be arriving in a destination from all over the world, they hold similar core values with each other with those in the travel destination. For example, generally speaking, people want to leave the world a better place for their children. They want to live in a safe and clean world. When those working in the tourism industry connect with travelers through storytelling and therefore these shared values, they create the conditions for conversations that actually resonate with travelers. Today, I have three wonderful presenters in this session. First, Ms. Anna uh, Drostovska, founder of Taste Happiness. Second, Dr. Alvana Damjanovic um, uh, from Zingidum University, the Vice Dean of International Cooperation. And finally, uh, Mr. Pankaj Manchanda, who is the founder and CEO of Org Traveler. So first, I would like to give the floor, please, to Anna to start her presentation. Anna, are you there? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name is Anna Adrostovska, and I'm a marketing and communication strategist, uh, creating concepts uh, for consumer brands and for the tourism industry for uh, 20 years. I'm also a proud member of uh, the Pla Planet Happiness team. And I will share my screen now. Uh, so today I will uh, give you a brief overview of the Taste of Happiness project. Okay, so to, uh, to the brief overview of the Taste of Happiness project that was uh, created in partnership with Planet Happiness. It uh, combines storytelling with digital innovation and focuses on host communities and the well-being agenda. So um, everyone already knows what the storytelling is. Uh, telling a good story makes the message you wish to communicate over 20 times more memorable and persuasive. And it is considered to be the, the most powerful marketing tool of our times. And especially destinations love storytelling as stories bring places alive, create an emotional bond with tourists enhance their experience and turn visitors to ambassadors. After they return home, they usually tell these stories to their friends and family. But there is often something missing in those stories, uh, local people. So if you uh, come across powerful campaigns like this from Singapore or Kerala, uh, it's, they are focusing on the people and their stories and passions. And we feel that this is the way to go. And instead of happy tourists, we should see 
happy local people, the destination's heart and soul. We call them local heroes. And all destinations have their local heroes and they all have stories to tell. And what is the best way of telling stories is through food. It's over food, like it's been done for generations. So to support destinations and local communities and the happiness agenda, we have created a Taste of Happiness project. The project's idea is to create a series of quality film episodes and presenting a destination's culinary heritage, but differently through local stories, through local heroes and their stories. So the taste of happiness is not about food. It's about people who grow it, make it, serve it, enjoy it and everything in between. So we simply put genuine people who are usually behind the scenes on stage and present them to a global audience. In this way, we bring to life stories that exist in their minds and memories and we prevent them from getting lost. Through those stories, they also tell us what makes them and their communities happy. Heroes may come from different hospitality and culinary industry areas, strong personalities, and real change makers. The project is in line with the happiness index domains and SDG goals. It focuses on local communities, promotes social inclusivity and empowers women, promotes happiness and the well being agenda, educates in culinary heritage and sustainable travel, promotes healthy food habits and farm to fork initiatives and supports the growth of the small business. The project is based on a digital platform where all the content is placed. In this way, we can easily bring viewers to this content with the most advanced internet campaigns. Traffic and all views are precisely measured. And thanks to big data systems and AI technology, we know exactly who's watched our films and what their profile is. After watching the film and getting emotionally engaged with our destination story, we can direct the viewer to offline or online sales channels of the destination or its products and brands by sending him personalized ads. The viewer will be more willing to interact with such ads than with a typical campaign without the prior emotional context. To summarize, the Taste of Happiness project shows the power of connecting people through passions, gives a sense of community and local pride to residents, helps local people increase their level of happiness and gives a positive impact. In short, we have a strong communication concept, the best TV crew from international TV networks and the best global digital technology this all together makes a powerful tool for tourism recovery. So do contact us for more details. And it was a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Anna. I think we move right along to our next uh, speaker, which is uh, Ivana. Are you there, Ivana? Yes, I'm here, thank you. I just uh, share my screen and hopefully. Okay, good. We'll we see see that. Screen. Yeah, thank you very much. So, hello everybody from Serbia. My name is Ivana Damjanovic and I'm a professor at Singidunum University. University. Um, so, um, I'm going to try and wrap my answers around um, the, three, the three questions that we had around these three um, ongoing trends. So the importance of tourism and happiness agendas today, I believe, uh, lies it's in capacity to transform the world of travel because tourism was uh, long considered a magic box in which no matter how many resources we use, they will materialize and we will profit from them infinitely. And I was recently asked to define happiness and this is what I came up with that it's multifaceted, that it's inclusive, and that it relates to the connection between individual and universal. So in a tourism context, I guess the route forward um, 
calls for tracing backward steps to the point which allows rerouting towards a more favorable future. So the, the, these steps, uh, happiness translates into the sentiment of gratefulness. What I mean here is that when tourism values the resources that um, it is invited to use and hopefully provokes this response. It's when all those who are even touched by tourism feel it as a force for good. So uh, happiness and tourism I need to uh, know the needs and hurts of communities and nature of destination in order to uh, help it heal and regenerate. Now, why? Well, last year emphasized uh, well-being motivated travel. Uh, however, I wonder whether it's really well-being if um, it is designed only for tourists because well-being should be a set, um, state for all or not at all. And well-being relies on the truth which is hidden behind destination stories. And we all, I think, travel to take up a role in a story. So the pitfall so far has been on obliterating the um, uh, genuine destination stories to uh, embrace the stories that uh, tourists had envisioned. So this way, destinations become all things to all people, but to its own. Whereas stories should not be allowed to demand, but to choose from the repertoire of stories to play. So that is why local communities should be empowered to take back that narrative, uh, which through its nuances speaks about the destination glories and uh, visions and hurts, and even give, uh, give voice to those who cannot speak. And the essence of the place creates the experience even before travel begins. Actually, even before tourism is ima imagined. And it exists without tourists and only then expands its reality to welcome them. However, destination local communities um, often don't feel fit to portray the essence. So the stories are told by third parties. Uh, and for example, um, responsible travel, travel journalists, they have um, invaluable perspective and reach and it should be enriched by this symbiosis with the local communities. And uh, finally, the pre-pandemic and current time introduced and then emphasized the virtualization of both tourism, storytelling, and education. So analyzing and discussing digital travel stories with my students during online classes has become a routine now. And how does this all extend to what I work? Well, I think academia um, bears an enormous responsibility uh, of preparing uh, future professionals, tourism professionals, for a mindful and responsible approach to tourism. Because general well-being is not a competitive advantage in tourism, but a uh, work and rest in weaving destination and traveler stories. So making our students equipped and self-confident to take on the compiling and imagining and Publishing true stories is the most sustainable role, I think, that academia can play for the future of tourism that we are trying to envision and support today. Admittedly, um, us tourism educators do have limitations in introducing this agenda um, because we can't simply go and devote um, entire courses to this aim, but um, our academic freedom allows us to uh, sneak this agenda into at least existing courses. So my teaching experience includes partnering with real travel journalists and uh, engaging my students into um, simulated or real storytelling projects blended into existing courses. And this is um, this has proven to be a really particularly rewarding experience in international groups of students. So to conclude, these are the values that we teach our children. And they all support this well-being approach to life and tourism. So our task as teachers and facilitators is to extend this um, uh, teaching to our students so tourism can actually really be uh, a means to happiness. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ivana. Uh, very insightful presentation with some really nice points. Um, but I'd like to first move on to our third presenter, which is uh, Mr. Pankaj Manchara. He is the um, 
CEO and founder of Org Traveler. It's a very interesting uh, new platform. And I just actually saw them. They were also pitched at the um, startup competition uh, for Southeast Asia in uh, with the Asian Development Bank. Um, so I'm a little bit familiar with them. Um, Pankaj, he's traveling right now. So he sent us a video. Thank you. most of us with an opportunity to introspect wow. our lives across different levels, sectors, and cultures. Uh, this pause, I believe, has enabled people to reflect on the true value of happiness and well-being. Uh, most people can now relate that the key to have an enjoyable, healthy, and productive life uh, depends on our understanding of what is important to us. And the attribute in most cases, which people are discovering, are things which are truly sustainable and meaningful. Uh, in fact, uh, we are seeing this tangible perspective change where people are slowly moving away from the goals of materialistic and impulsive uh, gains uh, to more on personal accountability, social responsibility, and sustainability. Uh, incidentally, travel and visiting new destinations you know, has evolved to be one of the most sought after aspirations for people across the globe after the lockdown specifically. Uh, everybody wants to travel. I, I do believe that this reset button uh, enables a larger percentage of us to follow this newfound thought process and hopefully we will evolve with a more constructive mind shift uh, post COVID. Right, so Org Traveler is a startup project um, use case which adopts new age immersive technologies of augmented reality virtual reality geolocation analytics um, and we've tried to put them to use to promote and therefore preserve the tangible and intangible heritage we've started in india with uh, consecutive phases across the globe that's the plan uh, the project vision and mandates have adopted the attributes of happiness and well-being of our stakeholders at the very center while designing and evolving the solution and platform. Uh, we believe that a sustainable and resilient uh, tourism model can evolve only if a viable economic model is established for the lowest denominator at the destination, which we believe in most cases are the host communities who seldom derive the benefit from tourism which is one of the top GDP drivers across the globe. Incidentally, uh, while exploring a new place, as you can relate to it or a destination, uh, most travelers these days seek to experience uh, its local culture, traditions, art forms, culinary delights, etc. The host communities in these destinations are custodians to offer these uh, authentic experiences. Uh, so Orc Traveler's mandate is to connect the visitors directly to the community, which delivers on two crucial points. Uh, the first one being uh, it completes the experiential travel piece for the visitors. They can acknowledge and appreciate the finer nuances of the tangible and intangible cultural heritage of a destination that they are visiting. Point two is uh, we're trying to evolve a model where we facilitate tourism dollars to flow to the host communities directly and help evolve sustainable livelihoods for them by creating viable economic models at the grassroots level. Uh, so, by aspiring to achieve this uh, agenda, we believe that the uh, communities would eventually be motivated to be natural guardians or custodians to the heritage of the region. It could be tangible, intangible, and actively work towards its preservation. While, uh, on the other hand, it completes the experiences of the travelers who would now be more sensitized and appreciative towards the culture, its heritage, and sensitivity. So, it's a kind of a win-win model that we are trying to achieve through this. Uh, specifically on this point, since we're talking about um, alignment uh, in context to sustainable development goals, I would request you to please download the ICOMOS SDG policy guidance document, which has been published on March 17th. It is available on their website. Incidentally, all travelers' use case is also documented as a case study of how tech-based interventions can be adopted. Uh, in this case, we've tried to align our mandate with SDG 8 under the broader vision of preserving culture, heritage, and community livelihoods. The vision for Org Traveler as a project is to really collaborate with the ecosystem and co-create a sustainable tourism model 
which makes heritage and culture available for all. So uh, our work uh, really offers us an opportunity to document, curate, and bring forth the unique traditions, uh, the rituals, culinary habits, depends on environment, cathartic practices, ethnographic accounts of the communities, and their thought processes, um, which basically also highlights the nuances of ecology, flora and fauna, and their impact on living heritage, including the built heritage. Um, the intervention that we are designing is really uh, attempting to dovetail into the tourism business domain, which uh, is one of the top GDP drivers across the globe. Uh, in our current um, vision, we are aligning to United Nations Sustainable Go uh, Development Goals of 11, 8, and 4. Uh, our, our vision is to further adopt guidelines to adhere to the quadruple bottom line, which is achieving sustainability basis. Uh, the pillars of purpose, planet, social, and profit. Thank you very much, uh, Mankash, for this uh, presentation. Okay, great. Thanks, Pankaj. Uh,